Hello there, this is Giovanni here at Frap Tools, and today we will be doing this. Now, if you are familiar with the 303 sound, you may think that this video is somehow clickbaity, and you'd be right to a certain point since we all know that a huge part of the iconic 303 sound is in the filter that we don't even have, and potentially also in the distortion that we don't even have. But we still can use that sound as a source of inspiration and as a way to see our gear with different eyes. So let us start and let's try to achieve an acid sound with this setup here. I think that uh, whenever we try to reach a specific musical sound, a huge part is also the melody that, that, that we play, because some melodies are more suitable for a certain kind of music and some other just aren't. And no matter what gear you have, no matter if you have the exact instrument you need, if you don't play with the right style and shoot a specific genre, you won't get that sound. And so I wrote this uh, simple sequence that I'm gonna patch to my brain saw yellow oscillator, which is gonna be our main voice. And this is what it sounds like. We need some syncopation, we need a fast tempo, and we need an envelope on our VCA. I'm gonna set it to transient mode, and I'm gonna populate the gate track. Okay, nothing too fancy, but this is the rhythm where we can start from. Now, uh, as I said in the beginning, the, the core, probably the most iconic element of the 303 sound is the filter. The way it resonates, the way it behaves to envelopes and accents. And here, as I said, we don't have a filter, let alone a resonant filter, but we have the brain soap and the brain saw has a true zero FM. And uh, so my idea is to take advantage of this feature here and uh, work backwards. So instead of using the filter to trim down a very rich uh, waveform, I want to use the linear FM, which is pretty clean, to add harmonics. So for example, now I set my two oscillators uh, one octave apart but we may experience we may experiment with other ratios later on and if I bring if I bring the modulator in which is one octave lower Let me check one thing. Uh, this palestra is retrigging on rest, so it misses some beats when the uh, two strikes are too close to each other. So I'm gonna use this one, which in, on the other hand, it resets uh, to rise. So it doesn't need, so the envelope doesn't need to reach the rest stage before being retrigged. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with this concept, I will link here and in the description our full tutorial on Falistri. Okay. You can hear that when we are here, our oscillator starts screaming and has a sort of acid sound. But we need, I think, a couple of things to... At, oh no, at least three other things to go in the, in the acid territory. The first one is an envelope on the filter. And uh, I'm gonna achieve that. Uh, I can uh, duplicate my uh, gate with the 333, but I don't have the 333. Um, you may ask, why did you put a CGM channel where 
in, in, in this place, I could have put a 333. And I'm going to show you why I need both the QSC and the stereo channel module. Um, I can create another gate track, which is fine. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to work in this way. Yeah. Or if I don't have the Usta sequencer, but I have another sequencer and I still have Felistri, I can take the end of rise gate and patch it here to trigger this other envelope. But as in this, in this case, I need my envelope to finish. So I think I'm just gonna stick to my second gate track, which I'm patching here. And uh, then I'm gonna patch this envelope to my uh, deviation amount. And this will almost feel like an envelope controlling the cutoff frequency, because basically we are doing the same thing, we are trimming down the overtones of our sound. Now we may want to try and uh, try a different uh, ratio. And perhaps drop our, our sequence an octave lower. We must be very careful with the envelope amount. Mm, perhaps we can transpose the sequence halfway through because part of the sound is also playing in the right range. So I'm gonna hold down shift all. Mm, better. Play with the right decay. Okay. Nice. I have my envelope on my filter. And now I need the famous uh, portamento effect. Now, I will link a frap talk both here and in the description where we discussed the whole portamento kind of thing. Right now, I want to try to stay within the Usta sequencer, even if this is not technically a linear uh, integrator that can create the slide effect. Because if I wanted to create a proper slide effect, I should route my CV through this integrator here. But as you can hear, now all my sequence is integrated and I don't have the ability of choosing which uh, steps should uh, integrate and uh, which nodes should slide like in the original 303. But we are getting close. So another option would be using the slide function. For example, here. Now, uh, this is different than uh, this, because when the stages are green, Usta uh, uses this as a target point, so the, the note will never reach, it will reach the 
uh, nominal value only at the end of the stage. And uh, I cannot have, let's say, an integration that goes through the node and I am at the same time have some uh, time to hear the straight value. But still, I think it can be really good. But we have uh, something different. And if I remember correctly, on the 303, as soon as I slide between two notes, the envelope goes off. So what I want to do is to remove my uh, envelope, both for the VCA and the uh, filter, which is our FM, from the stages that I have um, assigned the green color. So I'm going to remove this one, this one, this one, and this one from the VCA, but most importantly, from the filter. Much better. We're getting there. But there is one other thing of that made the 303 sound, which is the accent function. So we need a way to pump the envelope up uh, and give the filter more modulation, but only on certain notes. And uh, the most straightforward way is using the four quadrant multiplier, which is our uh, voltage controlled at an inverter. Uh, even a VCA, a DC coupled VCA like this one would do the job because we will use another voltage to change the envelope uh, magnitude. So I'm going to uh, try it on both uh, circuits. As I will start with the four quadrant multiplier since my yellow unipolar output is already patched to this input. So what I really need to do is just use this output here and prepare a CV track. I can use a CVB for this specific purpose. And uh, route, and uh, let's say I'm going to write, uh, we'll start with 2.5 volts. So I'm multiplying this by 2.5 volts. So it will sound quieter than this one. So I can compensate this difference through this uh, attenuator here. And then I will just add more voltage on the stages that I want to accent. And here we are. And I can play with this or with this. But I think that we need another thing, which is a kick to better experience this bass line. But we are almost there. I have a, a couple of more tricks to show, uh, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to use this other phalistry to create the classic uh, phalistry kick drum sound. Uh, 
I'm going to patch it to this channel here, the four quadrant multiplier. I'm going to set the green generator to loop and the time scale to fast so that it will behave as an oscillator. This one is going to remain my an envelope. Uh, and then on track two, I will uh, see. Track two is still at 120, so I'm I'm gonna set both my tracks to 125. Okay. Uh, and then I use this to fire this envelope. Use the attenuated output to control the pitch. I'm gonna stick with four on the floor pattern. And more punch. Okay. And uh, so one feature of the acid sound was the heavy distortion. And uh, so besides the after the filtering, uh, after the screaming and whistling filter, you just fed a fuzz or a distortion unit and you could achieve the other, the, the, the a more rave sound. And uh, apart from not having a filter, I don't even have a distortion module, but we can turn to our CGM to create uh, what we need. And uh, so one option is to create a feedback loop within the quad stereo channel. So if you have a quad stereo channel, you can try these tricks. Take the output, patch it back to another channel, crank it up, now this will saturate all the module, so if I bring my kick, it will sound saturated as well. I can, it can get really extreme, until it is just pure noise. Another option, if you want to save a channel, is to um, patch this to the left, to the right input, since my bass line is mono, and uh, turn this up. Now, I will bring this back into the channel and use this to control the saturation amount. Oh, I forgot to tell you that you could, of course, just use the quad steer channel saturation. It adds just a warmer sound. But the problem with this solution is that I am uh, saturating and I'm distorting all my mixers. So if I want to keep my kick clean, I can take advantage of uh, this output here. So I will uh, use the effect send. This one is the same as this since they are connected and uh, route it back to the channel. And now the kick is clean. This is set pre fader, so I can then trim the saturation. Oh, no. 
But let's say that we have the stereo channel instead of the quad stereo channel and uh, we might create the same effect. Uh, so let's say, let's patch, let's create the same patch. So right off the bat we have more gain than the quad stereo channel at the beginning so we can saturate it a little bit more right at the beginning and we have the semi normalization here so I can set the, the pan pot to work as a crossfade and I can take the output of this channel here and patch it back here Thus defining the distortion amount. You can get really, really aggressive. filter. I said that we can create the same function of the four quadrant multiplier with a DC coupled VCA, and I'm gonna demonstrate it with the brain saw. I need to do some cross patching here, so I want to patch my unipolar output here to my uh, modulation bus which is a linear VCA, so I can override the internal semi-normalization and take this and patch it here. And then I just have to take my CVB from the Usta sequencer and use it to control. The amount. Basically the same. And this is it. I hope you found this video useful and I hope that it showed you that uh, even if uh, we don't have the right gear to create that sound, we can still seek for inspiration and use it as a chance to get to know our gear better than we used to. I will see you next time for more ideas.